than 30. So let's all open up to less than 30, please. Okay. And today, with less than 30, we get to start talking about adding and subtracting fractions. So, when we add and subtract fractions, we need our fractions in a certain form. Who can tell me some of the forms of fractions that we have learned thus far? What are some different types of fractions that we've got? Ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind that participation. Keep it up. Destiny? A weird fraction. What kind of fraction is a weird fraction? An improper fraction. Okay? And what is, when you have an improper fraction, what makes it improper? When the big number's on the top. Do you want to give me an example? 50 over 2. 50 over 2. Good. Alright. We said answers are okay in improper fractions as long as what? Perfect? It's in the lowest term. It's in the lowest term possible. So what would we need to do to describe it? Divide by 2. 50 divided by 2. And we know that that happens equally to 25 over 1, which is just 25. Okay? So let's pick an improper fraction that we can't reduce. Somebody give me an example of an improper fraction that we cannot reduce. Jamon, give me a fraction we cannot reduce. An improper fraction that we cannot reduce. You heard me. Answer. Quickly. You can do it. That'll be faster. Jamika, improper fraction. You know the improper fraction. Destiny just defined one for us. Give me an example of an improper fraction that we cannot reduce. Yeah. You can take it on two. But we reduced it. Give me one we cannot reduce. Can't have negative zero. And we're not going to put any negatives into it. So try again. It's okay. 50 over zero. Not over zero over zero. Okay. You do know. Think about a fraction that we cannot reduce. That just means they don't have anything in common. I'm still letting you know because you're still trying, which I appreciate. So keep going. Keep 15 over 3. And 15 be divided by 3? 15 over 3. 17 over 3. Perfect. All right. So 17 over 3. And it's an improper fraction that we cannot reduce. Okay? So, we have an improper fraction, not reducible, so this would be an appropriate answer. So what's another version of this fraction that we talked about? It can be an improper fraction, or it could be a... Hand, hand, hand. Jamaica? A decimal. Okay? We're not going to convert that one right now, just because that's what we're working on. So we could have a decimal, and that would be... 5 point something. Or, we could have, what's our last option? Porsche, what's our last option? Oh. What type of fraction? We can have an improper fraction, a decimal, or a what? Offset? A, a, a proper fraction. Well, what kind of fraction is a proper fraction? A mixed number. A mixed number. So, how do we turn 17 over 3 into a mixed no, number? Destiny, how are we going to turn 17 over 3 into a mixed number? Divide. So how many 3s go into 17 equally, Jamaica? How many 3s go into 17 equally? 5. 5? Alright, and Porsche, what would 3 times 5 be? 15. So how many are left? 2 over what? 3. 3. Beautiful. So, 17 over 3, 5 point some, or 5 and 2 thirds, right? Alright, so, when we talk about adding and subtracting fractions, if we got mixed numbers or improper fractions, we also have a very simple type of fraction, right? Just 1 over 3. If I were to add 1 over 3 plus 2 over 3, let's say Jamika eats one pizza or pie cut into a third. Cut into thirds. Jamika eats one third of it. Porsche eats two thirds. How much of the pizza have, or pie have these ladies eaten? Destiny? The whole pizza or pie. 3 over 3, which equals 1, right? So here, the key was that we had a common denominator, right? The 3 on the bottom matched the 3 on the bottom. So all we get to do is just add across the top. It's a little different than multiplication, right? 
The cut is a multiplication you have to multiply across the top and across the bottom. We know when we add or subtract fractions, we only add or subtract across the top, but our denominator has to stay common, right? So what happens if we've got a fraction where we don't have a common denominator? What do we have to do? For, an impro or for fractions without common denominators, Porsche, what will we need to do? We need to what? <laughs> Think about it. How am I going to add a third of a pizza to a half of a pizza? We've got to add, but how are we going to add? We said we have to have a common denominator in order to add. Okay, so where does borrow? So what would three and two be able to have in common? Six. So how do I get from third oh, you to six? It on the left side and you to go to exactly. So what do I have to multiply three by to get six? Two. two. So what do I multiply one by? Two. Careful. Whatever you put to Whatever I did to the bottom. So I multiply the bottom by. Oh, you up. How do six? I need one third to turn into six. So how many six? So then it's two. one third. One. Good, because we multiplied by 2 <coughs> and got that fraction. Okay, what about 1 half? I'll move my equal sign over a little bit. What is 1 half in 6? For today, and let's keep going with this. Oh, one. Lord. I need 1 half in 6. How do I get from 2 to 6? 3. So? 3 over 6. So now if I take 2 half. 6 plus 3 6, what is my answer? You know it's going to have to be in this term. As we said down here, whichever the like term, 5 over 6. So 1 third plus 1 half is 5 over 6. Okay. So, like we said, eating parts of holes. So, Porsche, you ate a third of the pie. Destiny ate a half of the pie. So, here's the question. How much pie is left? One. We started with a whole pie. Good, for you, say one six. Because they ate five six, so that means there's one six left. You fixed my problem that nobody, nobody else. Awesome job. All right, so I'd have one six of that pie left if that's how much the ladies ate, right? You guys are pretty hungry today, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, so adding fractions. Our key to adding fractions is going to be like terms. They have to have the same denominator in order for us to add or to subtract them, okay? So, let's just take a glance at our book real quick. I want to make sure that you guys read those boxes so that this lesson, as you look back and um, use it to help you, will be helpful. So, fractions with equal denominators. That box in the top. Will someone read us that box, please? Stephanie, go for it. The add or subtract fractions to denominators are the same. The numerators are added or subtracted as indicated by the plus and minus sign. And the result is recorded on the same line. Beautiful. So that's what we did down here. What if, let's switch this. This said two thirds minus one third. Is subtraction any different than the addition when we have subtraction? We have the same denominator, so we're good to go. We can just <coughs> subtract one third. Beautiful. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Let's le read that second box, the denominator numerator rule for fractions. Demiko, will you read us that second box, please, on page 101? Beautiful. So that's what we did here. We changed our one third, we expanded it up to six, and we changed our one half and expanded it also to six because we said we're going to need the same denominator. Okay? So let's do the example that they give us. Five elevenths minus one fifth. Five elevenths minus one fifth equals what? So start us off, Destiny. What are you going to start with here? What do we need to figure out when we have fractions that don't have a common denominator? 
find a common multiple. And we probably want to go with the smallest one we can easily think of, right? What's an easy way that we could always do that? Multiply the denominators by each other. Exactly. So, 5 and 11, that is their smallest common or their least common multiple, is going to be 55. Exactly. And when you do that, you easily know what you multiply by because you multiply by each other. So, we know that one. Pretty easy. So, over there, how many 55ths do we have? We had 5 elevenths to begin with. Crochet? How many 55ths do we have? I'm pouting right now. Okay, how many 52? Uh huh. We had one. We had. Uh, how many 55ths are 5 elevenths? Look up here. Five times five. Uh-huh. And five times five. Twenty-five. So we have twenty-five fifty bits. Is what five eleven equal. How do you know that you solve the most by five Five. We didn't do five times fifty-five, we did five by eleven. Why? And we we said the easy way to find the common denominator is to just multiply them together. And that is going to be the smallest number that they so have in common. Every time I'm doing one of these. That's one easy way to do it. Like 2 and 3, how did you figure out what the common denominator was? 2 times 3. Common denominator of 11 and 5, multiply them together, 55. Common denominator of 10 and 20 could be 200. Or in a situation like that, you could just say, what do 10 and 20 have in common? You could just make this into 20. Right? So you gotta just look at the bottom that you're working with and figure out how you're gonna be able to make them into the same denominator. Does that make sense? Yes? You stood up for me? Thank you. Alright, so how many fifty fifths is one fifth? Mika, what do you think? How many fifty fifths is one fifth? Okay, so 4 times 3, 12, 
times 9, 108, okay? Is 108 going to be the best one to work with? Do we need to do 108? Should we pick something smaller? What's it? What would you want to pick, Destiny? 36. 36? Why 36? Is that the smallest one possible? One of the suggestions I have is look at your biggest number. You're doing well. I'm just going to guide you a little bit, okay? So, 9. What's the next multiple of 9? 18. Does 4 go into 18? No, does 3 go into 18? It does, but since 4 doesn't, not a good one. So, what's the next multiple of 9? 27. 27. Does 4 or 3 go into 27? 3 does, but again, 4 doesn't. So, go up again. 9 times 4. 36. 36 divisible by 3? Yes. Alright, so 36 are what we're going to want. So, let's write them below this time. So, what did I need to multiply 4 by to get to 36? Come on, what did I need to multiply 4 by to get to 36?
many does it need to get to 50? Uh, how many does it need to get to 50? Six. So how many, if it needs six, how many is left if I take six away from the nine? Three. The three. So? 53. Okay. Questions on that? So 53 over 36. Now we have to ask ourselves, can we reduce? If either of our numbers is prime and it can't go into the other one, We've got an easy job. So is either of these numbers prime? Or are either of these numbers prime? Correct, Graham. What do you see, Porsche? Are either of the numbers prime? Ooh, Porsche. <laughs> are either of the numbers prime? Come on, eyes up here. I'm about to say that on your notebook. So come on, are either of these numbers prime? Are either of these numbers prime? Fifty-three. Fifty-three is prime. I agree. So your fraction is in its simplest term. So your answer will be fifty-three over thirty-six. But now let's take it a step further. Although this is the correct answer, just to practice, how else could I write this number? We said we could write it as a decimal. Do I want to do that? I don't suggest decimals unless you're told to give a decimal. That's the hardest way to give an answer. I'm going to divide. I want to get a mixed number. So I'm going to take 53 and divide it by 36. How many times? This one's pretty easy to know the whole number. Will 36 go into 53, Destiny? One time. So it's 36. We subtract. How many do we have left? Come on. How many does 36 need to become 40? 17? Beautiful. Good. So how do I write my mixed number if I knew 1 and 17 over 36? Perfect. All right, you are clear to do your practice. I need to see all four of those, and I will clear you, and then you may start on your homework.